Hi, so welcome in, sir. How we doing? Good to see you. My man, what's up here? <laughs> We got the whole thing for real. Oh, I want to hug. Good mood today. I know. Aren't those shorts cool? <laughs> see ya. The 50 CD show. Not yet, man. Here <laughs> we go. Hey, brother. Hey, brother. Go, yeah. my bro. Good to see you. Thank wow. you for having me. How you been? Uh, awesome. You look good. You Thanks, man. <laughs>
human being, uh, you know, forget about sports, just in pop culture, period. You are an iconic fucking human being, man. When you walk into a room, people fucking shit their pants. And, and, uh, and, and, and to, to get the opportunity to meet you, wow. that's why you got people flying in from fucking Africa and Portugal <laughs> yeah. and all this other shit. It's, 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 it's fucking awesome. It's a big deal. It's you cool. Know, um, when I'm objective about myself, and I look at what I believe other people are looking at. I say, wow, can you imagine how many flaws this guy has? But that's the other thing that makes you who you are and why people are so blown away by you. You're so fucking brutally honest about yourself and, and the way that you, you look at yourself. And you are a very unique, amazing fucking human being, man. And, well, come and- on. You got to think about it, right? But then I don't know, because I look at Durant, when I see Durant, I feel like that. I feel like, fuck, that's everything. And that's the other thing that yeah. makes you so fucking awesome, too. It's just, yeah. You're awesome, Mike. You're awesome. I mean, anyway. You're, you're a nightmare yourself, man. Every time you hear MMA or UFC, you got to say Dana White. We hear that Dana White's the most um, gotta say high prolific gambler in Vegas. <laughs> that's the word. I, I like that word, prolific. Yeah, that's what you are here. Listen, listen, I, this is crazy. All I hear, the cab, the, the, um, the not the cab, the, but the, uh, the guy, Uber, everybody. Now, that Dana White, he can't go here, and he's banned here. Well, you know, Dana's banned at this hotel. He can't come there. Killing him like I that, said, what? Killing I him? didn't know he did things like that. I thought he had fights or something over there. People pissed him off. He's over there because he's racking up the money. He's taking everybody. No. When, when they say, in the ho- yeah, bankrupt the hotel. When they the say casino. banned, what they mean is they won't let me play at the limits that I want to play at. Mm. They'll make me play in you know inside this uh i would go in and i would play as much as they would allow me to play i would play but i'm one of these guys as soon as i fucking landed you know uh, the sickness is real as soon as i landed i went straight to the to the red rock and uh and, and started yeah, playing yeah i heard yeah. that yesterday no, the day before yesterday you were banned did, the, oh you did couple, couple <laughs> you, yeah yeah, yeah the, the news travels fast but yeah as soon as i got there i fucking i i went in and played and uh it's just it's what I like to do. What about know? Hong Kong? You ever um, played there? I only play in Vegas, man. Really? You know, when you play in these other places. Like Macau and all that. It, it, the, the thing about Vegas is when you play in Vegas, there, there's a lot of, uh, um, you, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, all these casinos are competing with each other. So you can go into these different casinos and, and set better rules for yourself than you could if you play in one of these Indian reservations or some of these other places. But I do like... I do like the win in Boston. The win in Boston is pretty gangster. Those guys, uh, I'll be in Boston. I leave for Nashville tomorrow. We got a fight in Nashville tomorrow, and I'll be in Boston next weekend. But uh, yeah, I, when I you're do playing, like the do win. Do you see some of your old crew needs come around too? They yeah, play yeah, I got all my friends back there, and yeah, the, the Boston fight's gonna be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Um, you might you ever get, get to from, Boston a lot? Yeah, I just yeah. came from a Boston. Wow, it really is. Crazy. It's a great fucking city. My favorite city besides really? Vegas, Boston. I used to city. go to where I used to fight as kids and amateurs. Where are you from? New York. So New York. Okay. Yeah, yeah. About he's from, 100%. He's, 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 he went, he's really preppy. <laughs> That's funny. No, the rivalry is fucking great, though. I love, I love the New York-Boston rivalry, and I love yeah, yeah. the Philly-Boston rivalry. Yeah. I love going to Philly. So I, I'm a big Celtics fan. And, Boston's and, not, oh, afraid no. nobody. I, not afraid to fight nobody. They're not afraid to fight. Philly's fucking awesome, right? I <laughs> I, we go into Philly, right, and, and, and when we're playing the Celtics versus Philly, mm. and I go in there and I wear my Celtics gear and shit, and I walk in and people are fucking like, you got some fucking balls wearing that in here. <laughs> Boo, UFC sucks. <laughs> and they're yelling all this shit at me when I go in there. And I got my seats and all the people are sitting around me. And if we can leave Philly with a fucking win, it's, it's the best thing ever. Um, you know, and, and, and I'm friends with, with Michael Rubin. Oh, and, and so we right, talk shit on, right. on, you know, back and forth with the Celtics and the, and the Sixers. Uh, I love the rivalry with, with Philly, man. It's awesome. Do you party with Michael Rubin? Like he does no, he, he, he's, he's invited me to a couple of his parties. He just did one for the uh, the Fourth of July. He had the big yeah, white yeah. party out there. Jay Z, everybody over there. Yeah, yeah, he's got everybody there. But I go to my pl- I got a place up in Maine, so I go there every Fourth of July. So I haven't uh, no, I haven't done one of his parties yet. I noticed this when I was younger, meeting people who I, I we call them wealthy. They um. The best people, they don't care about anything. They give you all the, anything you got. You you have to turn it away because they give you so much. It's you just the same fucking way. 
When you have it, you, you should be that way. way. You should be that way when you have money and somebody and you don't. I agree. I don't disagree. I so there was a gym. What the fuck was the name of the gym that we? With the Golden Gloves. Golden Gloves. So, so we used to try Hal Miller. That's, that's right. our man. Hal, Hal Miller. Hal, that's right. Sheriff. So we used we used to work out of a gym. You know, he was the fucking king. He, you know, when he would come, they'd clean the fucking gym out. Everybody had to leave. Tyson would come in, but it was a Golden Gloves gym for underprivileged kids and 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 you know people trying to make it come in and Mike kept that fucking place afloat. Oh wow. Yeah, Hal Miller was the guy who ran it. He's an old cop and whatever. They, they they'll throw you right out on your fucking head when Mike was I on his way that. there. So Mike would fight, so he'd have a big fight at MGM or whatever and you'd and you'd come back to the gym after the after the Tyson fight. And there were brand new fucking cars everywhere in the parking lot. What? Mike bought everybody a fucking car. Come on, Mike. Everybody well, that was involved go. in the fight had a brand new fucking car. That's how you yeah. go, man. That's Listen, if you say, you're, say you have a crew. You could be a gangster. You could mm. be a crew, whatever. If um, All your guys got to look like the boss. If a guy don't mm. know who the boss is, you don't know. You think all of you the boss. You got to look like what if you got a crew. Feed the wolves. He took care of everybody. Yeah. Everybody. When That's he fought, so everybody got new fucking cars. Now. People took care of me now, helping me. They, it all comes around. Mm. I don't disagree. Oh, man. I know we got that big fight, man. Boston, man. What's up, man? Yeah, no, that's going to be a fun oh, Tell me about Sugar that. Sean O'Malley. Oh, and, and Sterling. Uh, Aljamain Sterling. Didn't he just fight? Um, who did Sterling just fight? A great fight. What was no? Yeah, he just beat. Uh, who the fuck did he just Sterling? beat? Now we gotta Google it. No. Did he just annihilate Sterling? Who was it? No, no, no Sterling won. Oh. All Jermaine Sterling won. And Henry uh, Arruda. He fought Henry, right? Yeah, Henry Cejudo. Yeah, that was that's the right. They Henry told me Cejudo. He beat him. Fucking Mike knows better than me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he fought Henry Cejudo. Yeah. Um, now, now he's taking on O'Malley in Boston. O'Malley's um, so anything excited. For that? Any, anything big planned for that? Yeah, j- just, what do you think? How Molly? How did Molly come back since he broke his leg that time? Who? Remember Molly broke his Molly broke his leg. Oh yeah, yeah, leg. yeah. No, he, he didn't break his leg. He he uh he just injured his leg. He yeah, was, no, yeah he was so. he's good. No, he's good. He's healthy. He's ready to go. Al Jermaine's ready to go. Two weeks from now in Boston, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that whole that whole card. Tell uh, me who's who's the guy at um, UFC now? Who's the guy that the whole world wants to see? Well, I I mean. If you look right now, uh, Israel Adesanya, you know, mm-hmm. he's still on top. Is, too, yeah. is a bit is a big star for us right now. The, the, and what I love about this kid is uh, he loves to fight. He, he wants to fight multiple times a year. Um, Volkanovski, you know, uh, is, is an absolute savage. Hamzat Chemaev, yeah. I mean, he he's a huge star right now. Everybody wants to see. Yeah. He's fighting Paulo Costa in uh, in Nick Abu Diaz. Dhabi. He fought Nick Diaz already, didn't he? Who? Uh, oh, Nate Diaz, yeah, yeah. Well, no, uh, him and Nate were supposed to fight. Yeah, I mean, he didn't what, make the weight, so he ended up fighting Kevin Holland instead. Um, Nick is still a big attraction, huh? Nick, he yeah, is. but Nick, Nick doesn't. Uh, Nick, Nick isn't fighting anymore. No. Yeah, Nick, Nick's retired. And, but yeah, I mean, people love the Diaz brothers, man. Love them. But Nate's still fighting, right? Nate's still fighting. Yeah. You heard about Mike? He's gonna be training. Training your boy, we're going to so we going to Saudi Arabia. Or what? Well, that's what they told me. <laughs> I, I just think I'm gonna go there. You hear what I'm doing? No, talk to me. I'm from. Oh, this is really <laughs> awesome. I'm excited, yo. Let's hey, go. Why are you laughing at me? I'm not laughing. I'm excited too. Look, I'm going to. Saudi Arabia. I'm going to be training Francis Nagana to fight Tyson Fury. Come on, I know you must have heard that. <laughs> I didn't hear that yet. No. Oh uh, yeah, they told me and they bit my arm. I had to do it. What do you think about uh, John Bones Jones' legendary comeback? That's ah, fucking. I mean, the guy is. He's the best. He's the, that's he's one the, the old time. That's one of the all time great 100%. situations. Boom, that scene. Boom. He, he's the best. He's the he's the he's the greatest. Uh, he, he's one of the greatest fighters of all time. Period, in all of combat sports. And you know, I don't think people give him enough credit. The guy is undefeated. He's never lost in MMA. Moved. You know, went right through fucking murderers row at light heavyweight as a young fucking guy then moves up to heavyweight and, and wins in heavyweight and, and and they say he's crazy what do you think about that they they say he's crazy <laughs> all fighters are crazy yeah. you know that but uh <laughs> no he's what, what makes john jones so fucking unique and and so special is if you look at all the things 
that he did outside of the octagon and outside of the sport, yet still destroyed everybody that he fought. It's pretty fascinating. Um, but yeah, I mean, Mike, you know better than anybody, when you're dealing with professional fighters, you have to be a little crazy to be a professional oh, fighter absolutely. at the end of the day. To live with fear like that? Huh? To live with fear for all those years yeah. like that? Fighting yeah. Fighting demons, man. He's fighting a lot of demons. Man. 100%. But yeah. those demons make him who he is. Isn't that something? Those nasty things make you the person you want to be. But John Jones is John Jones is one of those guys that when he's gone is when he'll really get the credit that he that he that he absolutely mm. deserves. He is a bad, bad motherfucker. Yeah, he's 100%. A bad man. You got a fight coming up in November with Stipe. Uh, Stipe, yep. Yeah, Stipe yeah. Miocic. Oh, he fighting Stipe? Yep. Yeah. Yep. I didn't know Stipe was still fighting. And Madison Square Garden. He's an old warrior. Yep. Is that, is that going to be like his last fight maybe? There's a rumor. It could be. I mean, you know, John's talking about retiring uh, mm. after that fight, but we'll we'll see what happens. We'll see how it plays out. I mean, he's so fucking good. It's just, and uh, you know, I, I think it'll depend on, what challenges are out there for him after that fight if he wins, if he can beat Stipe. Realistically, if you look at it, Stipe is looked at as the greatest heavyweight ever. John Jones is the greatest mixed martial artist of all time. We'll see how it plays out. Man, Mike, man. Excitement. We're going to have to go to fucking in New York. York. we got to go to New York, man, for that one, man. Yeah. You guys should what come. day is that? Uh, it's 20. in uh, November, yeah. Yep, November at MSG. So what's up, man? Elon Musk. <laughs> What's going on with Zuckerberg? Well, I heard you got all the information behind You got to promote that? It's real. It's real. They both, <laughs> my wife, I do want to my fight. It's my real. Wife said, real? My, yeah. really my real wife that? says, um, it's real. Zuckerman's going to kick his ass. I said, no, I think he's going to bust Zuckerman's ass. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, you know, we were literally talking, funny because we were talking about the Coliseum uh -huh. for that fight. And I actually did have a meeting with the, uh, it's the Minister of Culture's team. Really? In, in Italy uh, to actually hold that fight in the Coliseum if, if it would happen. So, well, how are they going to fight you just going all out or just boxing? No, it would be, it'd be it's, MMA. Yeah, they would, they would oh, yeah, I want to see that one. Right, no way, man. I want to see that. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're talking. Now, is Elon going to use steroids or something? <laughs> no, no steroids, no. No you steroids sure? allowed. But don't sleep on Zuckerberg, These guys would be man. drug tested. My wife says the same thing. Zuckerberg's going to kick his yeah, ass. But Zucker, he's a blue belt. Ain't he like a blue belt? Zucker, Zuckerberg takes this shit very like, seriously. He, he is a huge UFC fan. He trains, and uh, he's an MMA fan, I Elon's should say. Elon's going to fucking yeah. karate yeah. kick this like, motherfucker, has a, man. He has an octagon in his look, backyard. Hey, but look how Elon he looks. He, look, he doesn't even look like that. <laughs> Elon doesn't even look like he's from this planet. Look at him sometimes. But Elon grew up doing judo. He's a... He, he, See, he, he's a legit and, judo guy. Ah, and on. yes, he no is. legit judo guy. Come on, yeah, that's yeah. why he wants to fight this young motherfucker. Intergalactic <laughs> gymnastics. What would be the pr prediction for that? Like, I mean, that's I have, wild. It'd be yeah. I mean, it's one of those fights that if we did do that, I would build a killer undercard, you know, with tons <laughs> of great fights, and then you'd have the main event. But think about how big that fight is. Two of the richest, most powerful guys in the fucking world wow. are gonna are gonna I would fight pay for it. On the biggest stage you ever. You pay for that fight? Everybody yeah. would. Who the fuck doesn't want to see that <laughs> I fight? I it for free. What's Who doesn't want to see that fight? Everybody well, would watch it. Me gonna pay. That's, that, that's <laughs> the kind of fight your fucking, your grandmother would watch that fight. You know what I mean? It, wow. it's, it's, a, it's a huge, Trump I, would have to fight in, Putin can, for, that to, for, for a fight to be bigger than that. <laughs> And my, I can see somebody in my house like, why people just got so much money, you just don't know what to do with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, I mean, to do. Wait, I mean, Connor, the Connor fight in Floyd was like 600 million. How, how, how much, much is this fight going to build? Like, is it yeah, going to be bigger than that? I think this thing does a billion dollars. Billion dollar revenue, fight. In revenue, yeah. A billion in revenue. The biggest fight of all time was Connor and Floyd, which did uh, four point something million pay-per-view buys. And then the, the, wow. the second biggest one was Floyd and Manny, which is literally right behind it mm. is that one of the reasons mcgregor don't want to come back he made so much money he don't need to come back huh yeah i mean Flo uh, uh connor makes a lot of money you know outside of the he's selling too. liquor dude he's a liquor brother lots of shit he's, he's got his hands on a lot of different things so he's that will taste better than this howler shit <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's liquor is that Really? Wait. Tell us about the what kind of liquor that is. It, it's uh, it's tequila. No, 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 no. It's, 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 it's like some a, Spanish yeah. one. This, Fireball. This is, this is a Kentucky bourbon. Yeah. That shit is 
spicy, Mike. Don't do, do you no, drink, Mike? Mike? Yeah, you ready? No, it's, it's got a banana flavor. Yeah, okay. to it. I've been sober for drink? seven years. Seven hmm? years. Yeah, good for you, brother. If no, that's not the popcorn I like. Well, that one's garlic and the other one's white cheddar. Which one uh, do you want? No, I would like, look at this. Look at this. What is that? Cheddar? The cheddar, white cheddar. The black one is the white cheddar. Stop, stop well, screaming. Well, well, <laughs> let, me, let me know in advance, motherfucker. <laughs> and Mike, th- th- this one's actually high protein. It's called Kudo. It's, it's high protein. If I, I, I want some pop, make some popcorn to taste just like that. T- tell me that that isn't awesome. That it's not good popcorn. You're going to love that popcorn. Mmm, tastes not good, bad. right? It's not bad because it's cheddar. It's yeah. healthy popcorn, actually. It's healthy. Gluten free, huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what we eat at home. <laughs> Gluten free, yeah, keto, Mike, tear that shit up, and it's high protein. Look, look, look. yeah. You think it's true? <laughs> hey, tear that shit up. Your life expectations based on what you eat, brother. Exactly. Very true. You switched your whole thing up, man. You know, <laughs> I'm keto'd up. You ketoed up now. No, oh, what you mean? What did you mean? No, well, what did you mean that he got born? What was before that? How did he look before that? <laughs> you know, you know, he's a chubby motherfucker. Now he's, he's slimmed out. He's cut up now. Oh, okay. Like, ready to fight. I ain't ready to fight. But <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, uh, yeah. I fight to get on the treadmill every fucking day. <laughs> if the money's right, Mike, would you would you fight in UFC? Are you huh? training? No, no. Oh, well, train. I, I don't even want to see Mike fight anymore. Me and me and me and, me and fight. Me and Mike got, got into it about this Mike before. Like, like, so when Mike, Mike was fighting the uh, when Mike was going to do the Roy Jones fight, I I, w- I was totally against it. I didn't want him to fight. Okay. And and I kept saying like, yeah, I don't think Mike should fight. And then Mike called me one day and he's like, hey, stop saying this. I'm a fucking grown ass man. If I want to file, file, I said, you know what? You're right. You're right. And, and, and you, know you know, cause he felt like I was like shitting on the fight because yeah. I didn't want him to fight. Okay. So I no. called him. So listen, he didn't want me to fight. Yeah, though, I knew this was but coming. But he gives me a job I knew this fucking with some shark. I knew this was coming. I, I'm, I'm in the, listen, and the guy that's supposed to be my shark instructor got his leg and his arm bitten off by a shark. <laughs> And he's going to tell me shark are great animals. <laughs> no, this is one of the funniest fucking so. I'm so I said, Mike, I, I, would, for I, real? I don't want you to fight, man. Listen, I, I'll, I'll, I'll get you something else. So, so, you know, Shark Week comes up, right? So, so I get Mike this, this gig hosting Shark Week and, and, and going down to the Bahamas and doing the shark thing. And uh, he's like, so let me get this straight. I've been fighting my whole fucking life. You know, that's what I, I feel comfortable getting in the ring and fighting. You don't want me to fight, but you want to throw me in the water with a bunch of fucking sharks, right? So apparently when Mike went down there. Isn't that true? And, 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 and he gets down there, like, he, he freaked out a little bit from what I heard. I wasn't there. This is the second hand I heard. He scared the shit out of the whole crew that was shooting the, shooting, shooting the, 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 the Shark Week thing. And then, motherfucker, if I get bitten, if, I, <laughs> if it's not too severe, I'm going to come here and kill all you motherfuckers. <laughs> That's I'm, exactly what happened. I'm so everybody was, death. I'm scared to death. So everybody who was filming the no Shark Week fucking, fucking thing <laughs> were shitting their pants. They were so fucking scared because I guess he threatened everybody that if, like if he gets bit, it's over. Yeah. yeah if I'm not too severe, I said it's <laughs> over. Cause I'm, I'm, just, I'm in there with sharks and sharks are going to boom, hit me in the head. No boom, way. Hit me, hit the diamond, hit me. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Damn, yeah, man. David, David trying to set you up, man. I yeah, I know. <laughs> he was mad at me. He, he was not happy with me. And about I told the whole, my wife, I said, "Baby, you let me do this." The whole <laughs> fucking shark I'm week telling my and, wife, uh, I said, "Baby, you let me do this shit." There's another guy that uh, that that uh, that states that you don't want him to fight. He wants McGregor, and you hate him, Jake Paul. What's up, like? What's, what's up with Jakey? Yeah, yeah what's up with I, I, I don't fucking hate Jake Paul. Jake <laughs> Everybody Paul, thinks he's unhateable. Jake he's Paul unhateable. is one of those guys that that you know he's a young kid and he's just trying to get attention. You know, he's mm. he's always looking for attention and and. Uh, you know, he's doing his thing. I mean, Whatever. It, Whatever. It's all good. I mean, he's, he's doing well with the KSI and all that shit, right? Oh, that's his brother. Yeah, well, okay. The brother is fucking brilliant. I mean, the brother's fucking raking in big dough. You know, the, 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 Logan Paul is, 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 uh, is a businessman. This kid's really mm. making some big moves. And KSI, too. Those, those, those kids are making real money and doing KSI. their thing. KSI. What's that? The KSI. Yeah. <laughs> 
I think the popcorn's a hit. <laughs> the, the, pop, the popcorn's a winner over there. I, I can't eat the popcorn because it's got like a little lightweight root canal. Oh, shit. <laughs> Drugged up? <laughs> your tooth hurting? No, but I got all that shit in there. In your teeth? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, when the wear's off, it's gonna be a hell of a day. Oh my God, man! Mm-mm. Your top five UFC fighters of all time. Coming from so hard to do because you know when you look at the twenty-three years that I've been in it, there's been so many great fights, and so many great. But you got to you got to start with John Jones. Oh, can I tell you my list? Yeah, I got, I got John John Bones Jones. I got Khabib. I got Connor. I got George Saint Pierre, and I ended it with Sugar Sean. You don't know no motherfucking all, body. The, those are all good ones. You got he's, on you, recent, no mother, he's on recent people, man. Not, but but you, you got to have Ronda Rousey. You know what I mean? You got to have uh, Amanda Nunes, greatest okay. female fighter of all time. Okay. Um, there's just so many, it's hard to pick five and say, you, you know, you have, like he said, you know, those are all recent. You, how do you not have Usman? Kamar Usman's got to be in there. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough to Think about pick those tough five. guys back in the day. Chuck Liddell. Sam Rock and exactly. all those Chuck guys. Chuck oh. in his dude, time. The original. Gracie and Her his in, in his era, in his time. Yeah, it's hard to just pick, you know, five all-time great fighters. There's been so – if you look at the different generations of people who helped Listen, take the sport guys, to another exactly, level. We've seen guys fight no um, w- um, weight lit division. A guy 120 come fight a 400 pound guy. That was the original, right? That, that's how it started, like 300 pounders versus like. Who's truly the baddest man on the planet? Matt Hughes would have to make the list. I mean, it's just. Mm-hmm. There, there's, oh, man. There's so, there's so many people that have. It, it, it's tough to pick. Uh, you still talk to Frank Murray? Huh? Frank Murray. Frank Murray, yeah. he was great too. Frank like Murray was. the original, like one of the, the beginners, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then you look at all the different Brazilians that, that, that came up, you know, the Pride Vito. era. I mean, you know, pride oh, fighting out of Japan, and it's hard to just pick, you know, five. Rickson was great. good too. Gracie, Rickson, Gracie had no run. But yeah, but he never really fought in the UFC. Yeah. Hoist, on, on, hoisted, on, but on, but yeah. Hickson, he fought in pride. pride. Exactly. Mike knows his shit. <laughs> Mike when this knows thing his first shit. happened, who did we have when this first happened? Not Jim um, Duggett. Who was it? Who was those guys? Oh, you you're talking about like uh, Dan start, Severn? Yeah, Severn. What's the other guy for Dan Severn? Um, tub- uh, Don Fry. 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 Exactly. Crazy. These people are th- It's not like these guys talking out. They're very, you know, you can tell these guys been in school and stuff. Media Don time. Fry and all those guys was just hard off the street. Yes, tough guy. They didn't have no skill, but yes, tough. Don Fry punched a fan in the face like uh, a few that. months ago, you know, and I just saw an interview with him and he was like, uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> was, she was. The, the, this girl Nina, who who does you know is a social influencer, was talking to him about it, and uh, I guess the, the the fan was saying, "Why don't we go outside?" And Don Fry punched him right in the face when he said that to him. But Don Fry made it sound like he, he said, "She said he, he asked you that, and you punched him in the face." And he said, "No, he asked me that." And I said, "Where out here?" He was acting like he was pointing to <laughs> outside, and uh, yeah, he punched this guy oh, in the face. Man. He's got to be getting sued over that. Uh, but yeah, he fought some good fights. True, he's a tough, mean motherfucker too. Yeah, he does seem like one of those really hillbillies. What oh, motherfucker? Exact, hundred percent. Do it, do it, punch, boy. Yeah, you don't ask Don Fry if you want to go outside, no matter how fucking old Don Fry is. Who's the most horrifying, like, like, like fear factor, like a Mike Tyson type? Hmm, yeah, that's like a good question. In the Mike Tyson era, like being Mike. Yeah, crossed over to you know UFC or MMA. Yeah, I I would say right now, you know Hamza Chimaev is is like that guy. Hamza Chimaev. He's not like a human even, huh? Yeah, no, what? he'll, he'll punch like, in the fucking yeah, face. He's just strange. In two seconds. Uh, that whole that whole Sarah Longo team has that 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 attitude too. Th- that whole crew. Um, they they've slapped a few fucking fans here and there too. <laughs> His fans are getting yeah, fucked up out here. We've had, we've had some issues with fans those guys. Love it. Um, fans love it, Mike. <laughs> yeah, but for the most part, our, our 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 guys and girls are great. I mean, they're they're all normal, well-adjusted, you know, people that 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 don't run around, you know, doing that kind of shit. What, what's her name? Uh, uh, Juliana Pena. Mm. Juliana Pena, fucking. Beat some bouncer's ass and got sued for that. Uh, oh, and man, she just did something else. Did too. Some of these girls will 
throw that down. Poor little girl fucked the bouncer. Yeah, God. yeah. She, I, I don't remember exactly what the story is. And wow. Ronda Rousey beat the shit out of a couple guys in a movie theater once. Uh, That's why these guys, these people, are single people, man. Yeah. No guy got no time for no woman to be beating his ass. <laughs> hey, man, actually, hey, come back. <laughs> I think he sued her too. I think the the bouncer sued Juliana Pena. Um, but yeah, I mean, all these all these kids are tough, man. They're, they're... You want to make a name for themselves. Uh, speaking of tough, man, this power slap league, man. What's up? Man? Wow, that's some real ass shit, man. Yeah, no, it's, slap them right out. It's it's been fun. That's what this is. We're in the power slap war room right now. This is where we make the fights for Who's slap. Who's the champion now? Well, we got all the champs right up here on the wall. The, hey, the next hey. fight. The next fight is is uh, next week. Next Wednesday, we are. Are you in town next Wednesday? No, I'll probably be in Saudi Arabia. So. Oh, shit. All right. I got to get you to one of these fights. Oh, shit. Miami. Yeah, so we got this dude. That, 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 so, the, so the co-main event over here, this kid right here, his name is Nate Bernard. Monster. This kid's a big fucking monster. Apparently, he's a security guard for the Buffalo uh, Bills. <laughs> his hands are fucking huge. And... and this dude knocks everybody out. I'm so excited to to, to watch uh, uh, Nate fight uh, next Nate, week. Nate is slapping them out. Oh my god! You got to see this dude. Anybody I, have to go I, to the hospital I, after being slapped? I, I gotta. Oh yeah, yeah. I gotta. Hey, think about back in your day. Think about back in your day when you used to train. If you would have slapped somebody, open hand slap somebody, oh, you would have fucking knocked everybody out with an open hand fucking slap. You know what I mean? You were at a place where. Oh, you know, you're probably shit. better off slapping people than punching them back in the Listen, day. Um, <laughs> do these guys on steroids doing this stuff too? No, no, like these fuck? guys get drug tested. Yeah, yeah just like the, the the fighters do. Yeah, they cool. they get drug tested. They go through the same safety protocol and all that shit that that that, that UFC fighters and boxers go through class too, with though. the athletic commission. Oh man, no, so I watch some of these guys are monsters. Hey, did you see the picture that I got out there? Uh, outside my office of, of you and uh, I think it's Mitch Blood Green. Are you serious? Is it, yeah, where you're knocking his mouthpiece out of his mouth. We're gonna go it's check it's it out, out by my <laughs> office. You got to see that picture. It's one of the fucking coolest pictures that I I got a lot of fucking Tyson shit in this office, but that picture is badass. You know Billy Keen? Why the name? Billy Keen. He's associated with Tyson Fury. But, I was gonna say he's from England. Right? Yeah. No, no. I think he's from here. Yeah. But Scott, he, Scott. he gave me that picture as a yeah. gift. I know who's not. It's who fucking is. badass. You guys got to shoot that picture before we leave and look mm. at this picture. I got it. Man, crazy Mitch Green. He's a born again. Um, he's a born again Christian. I think he's a preacher. Is he really? This is what I heard. <laughs> if that yeah. was kind of makes sense. That's one of my favorite all time stories. The the the, the, the Mike Tyson, Mitch Blood Green fucking stories. Dapper, dapper Dan. Can you imagine? <laughs> this Darius the Destroyer guy. What's up with this guy? Darius, yeah, um, yeah. Dar Darius has had a tough run in the last uh, whatever. AJ, AJ's the man. This kid Austin Turpin, mm -hmm. fucking lunatic. This kid's an absolute lunatic, um, but tough as hell. You got uh, the crazy Hawaiian. You know we got the super heavyweights now. That fight uh, with him and Camille, th 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 that's going to be uh, over seven hundred pounds on the stage for, for that fight. Um, These are some monsters. <laughs> Yeah, we got Power Slap 4 coming up August 9th. It's next Have Wednesday. Have there ever been one smack the guy never got had the chance to smack the guy back? Yeah. You know, everybody thinks if you get the first shot that you automatically win. It's like 52%. 52% of the people that slap first win. So it's it really is. Uh, Plus, uh, you don't have that big of an advantage as people think you do. What's the longest round that it went to? So you can go uh, three rounds. The, the title fights are five. Yeah, you get nah, five, five times, five, Mike. Five, five, five. <laughs> yeah, the AJ Yo, sound like live. The AJ Wolverine fight went the distance, so it went wow. five full rounds. Yeah, and those two are both bad motherfuckers. So, so who won the decision? Uh, Wolverine. Yeah. How do you how do you judge it? Judges, you know, they have judges there just like yeah. uh, MMA and boxing. Yeah, I like that one better. I like these. Better. Yeah, guys get rocked, guys get knocked down, and get back up. Um, you got to come. I'm telling you, you have to come to one of these fights live. You will fucking have a blast. It's so fun. Oh, this shit sounds crazy. Being there live is fun. People jump up from like, I won. I hit it. Oh, What's yeah. What's slap going out? Everybody's like, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The energy in the place is fucking awesome. Wow. 
It's it's a lot of fun. Even a barbaric, aren't we? <laughs> but that's what that's um, it's a platform for that people want to see that. Mm. That's who we are. Let, let me tell you what. So, you know, we kill it here in the United States. In in India, doing like three hundred million views. Indonesia, a hundred <laughs> million views. Brazil, thirty million views. Forty million views in Russia. Um, the list goes on and on. We just launched in China. In 48 hours, the thing did something like 100 million views in 48 hours. And no, it's, it's fucking killing it. Killing it. Power slap. Yeah. Honestly, these Americans are crazy. Who's that guy with that power slap? Well, this stuff was coming out of like Poland and Russia. Okay, and so I started yeah. looking at it in like 2018. And I'm like, this is fucking crazy. So I took a deeper dive into it. And, and this, the, the, it looked like somebody filmed it on their flip phone and okay. they were like in a basement or a bar or something and there was a barrel in between them and I looked at the number. It had 350 million views on YouTube. And that's what I said. And I was like, this is like a fucking Justin Bieber video for Christ's sakes. That, that 350 million views? Fuck that. So I dove in. I said, what would happen if you did this the right way? Got it sanctioned. Had good production uh, you know, quality. You know what the answer is? Billions of fucking views. That's the answer. We launched it. I just, I said this thing could be fucking big. Same thing I said with the UFC twenty five years ago. That's crazy. And here we are. I remember so. when the first time and when they said they gonna have some UFC. They get the fuck out of here. They ain't gonna have no fight. There ain't gonna be no real street fight. Um, fight to the death. They get the fuck. And then next thing you know. We got, um, it was not Hacksaw Jim Doug. I keep thinking of him, but it's not. Some guy, I forget his name, and then another guy, they, they go and thing, boom, boom, boom. Mm. Cash. Blood everywhere. Oh, shit. <laughs> when I went outside, everyone was talking about it, the whole fucking neighborhood. You, I remember you that see too. that shit? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, there's been some, like some, in fighting, there's been like these cultural moments um, you know, outside of traditional boxing and things like that. The first UFC was one of them. And then, um, like, the backyard fights with Kimbo Slice. Yeah, beautiful. When the internet right, really man. started booming. Those backyard fights and the Kimbo fucking thing was so massive. Yes, it was. Um, and the other one, whether people want to fucking admit it or not, was slap. When this slapping shit started, you know, 350 million views on, on YouTube. I started looking at it and and, you know... It's crazy how there's always these little cultural movements and moments in combat sports. Just when you think you've seen it all, you haven't. Remember how fucking big Kimbo Slice was? Yes. I saw his last fight before he died. The fight that he died. Yeah. It was in. Um, and Masvidal. Masvidal came yeah. up through that I saw too. That I watched his fight. Too. Yeah. That's crazy. He's he's the the techniques coming into the ring, like just going at. It's just fighting with rules. Mm. That's all. I know you went through hell in the beginning, like clearing everything and band the banding and trying to ban you guys. And yeah. Too hard for. No, but I love that shit. Yeah. That I I love taking something that people say can't be built and can't be done and doing it and building. Now it's it American pastime. Making it big. Right. I mean, if you look at the UFC and like he was just saying, what we went through in the beginning, now it's fucking everywhere. This is this is, you know the new combat sport that people are training in and, and, and doing like if Mike Tyson was fucking 13 years old, this is what he'd be yeah, training to do now. Crazy. If he was 13 years old, Flying this is what it. he'd be doing. <laughs> my mask. I put some wrestling in it to him. My mask. Yeah. At your prime. You probably would fucking everybody up. I don't know if they stepped on my toes. I'd have tapped out. <laughs> yeah, I seen some guy, they step on the toes. He hold him, step on his toes. I said, fuck. Yeah, you look at that now because you're fucking 55. Back when you were yeah, fucking young, 13, nothing, you yeah. were a fucking beast. You, you, you'd be all over this shit right now. This <laughs> yeah. is what you'd be doing. The scenario of having Mike come out in a at his prime. With my shorts and no shoes. A fucked the ground up toes. game and wrestling. My fucked up toes. Right? <laughs> you probably killed somebody. But listen, I'm talking about in the beginning. I th I'm surprised they didn't kill anybody in the beginning of this shit. Yeah, no, it's... it's uh. Well, if you look at it, think about this, they right? They fought till you were out. There was no time limit or anything. Yeah. And 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 uh th those guys weren't like 
peak physical athletes back then. It was, you know, it was all these tough martial arts guys with different backgrounds and, but it was fascinating. It's there's always something about fighting and these new forms of fighting that, that captures, you know, the imagination of people all over the world. It's why I always say, you know, it doesn't matter what color you come, what color you are, what country you come from, what language you speak. Mm. We're all human beings, man. Fighting's in our DNA. We get it and we like it. We like to fucking watch it. Listen, this is what we do more than anything in life. We fuck and fight. I think we fight more than we fuck. <laughs> so that's that's the basics what human do. <laughs> but you like believe. to watch a fight. Oh yeah. The thing yeah, is, if, yeah. the thing is about fighting is <laughs> when fights break out, you know. Don't care where. We, at. Look at World Star. Oh yeah. Look how big <laughs> World Star became. From <laughs> just from fucking fights breaking out, and and we love <sighs> to watch it, and and uh, you know. You be a Morgan Stanley and these two guys start fighting these two bankers, the whole world would stop everything. Oh, yeah. What the fuck? Get him, John. Hey, Elroy, you got him. That's just what it is. I mean, they fought at the true. UN for Christ's sake. Oh, you remember that fight? <laughs> United they punted. They brawling each other. <laughs> Mike, Mike knows every fight online, yo. That shit is crazy, man. Speaking of a fight, heavyweight, 32 seconds, man. Your man, Derek Lewis, man. That was fucking wow. Crazy. How about that flying knee? Jesus. Fucking Derek Lewis That's with like, a flying knee. Who did he hit? <laughs> did you see that fight? No, but who did he hit? Uh, Derek Lewis uh, fought this last Saturday, right? Marcos? Uh-huh. Yeah, and he fought He fought a tough motherfucker. Comes running right out. First thing he throws is a flying knee like Masvidal did yeah. against Ben Askren. And Clips him with it, right? Not tough even Brazilian a dude. Not even a minute. Knocks him down, gets right on him, and fucking fight over. I remember the last time I saw him fight, he fought that... I think with a Russian guy, with a good jab, he stopped him. Big guy, Derek Lewis, is a, what is he from Houston, right? There, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> he was on a bad run here, and uh, you know, it was looking like he was going to retire. Mm-hmm. He comes out with this flying knee and stops oh, the he, guy. He's back on top immediately. 30, exactly, thirty-two seconds. Right back in the game again. Something Mike would respect. Thirty-two seconds. Yes. <laughs> as long as you don't give up, you got a chance. That's like his uh, last contracted fight. Are you going to resign? That was the last fight in his yeah. contract. Yeah, he was. we were talking about him retiring. So, okay. um, so now. He ain't retiring now. <laughs> <laughs> just like boxing, you just take one punch. Your whole life changed. Is that true? We, I, I guess we didn't peep it because we were at the other fight. We were at the, uh, you know, the Terrence Crawford yeah. and the Errol Spence fight, which is like, you know, Mike, Mike was right about that fight. I called ninth round. I thought it would be more competitive, though. Mm. Yeah, everybody did. That, I mean, that, that that was the fight that everybody was saying. It's about time this fight got made. This is the fight that people need to see. I didn't see it. I had a fight that night, and I was yeah. in Italy. Yeah. But um, I heard it was it was complete domination. If, if so he, who, do, who does Crawford fight next? Um, if you don't fight another fight with Spence, he's got to fight this guy. Well, why like would you him. fight Spence again if it was a complete? He has a, he has a mandatory clause. Ah. ah. It's up to Spence to if he wants to fight now. Got it. Um, okay, so if that's so who do you think he should fight uh other than other than Spence? Who would Crawford? be next for him? Yeah, Crawford. He could either fight the Cholo guy, Charlo, or the guy from Philadelphia. Boots and his boots. He's the up and coming guy everybody's talking about. Hmm. <clears throat> awesome. I think Spence should fight him in order to get a rematch with Crawford. Yeah. Good idea. That's what I like. That's what we would do here. Yeah. Exactly. That's true. A lot of people don't want to see a rematch though after that. Yeah. No, that's, so the that's, thing. Why, that's why if, <clears throat> if he's going to improve, we're going to see how he does with That's why he's guy. right. Then you fight one of these guys, work yeah. your way back up to exactly. fighting Crawford. Plus, it's another payday for you. Big, that's what this you know is what all mean? about. And, and it, would, it would create some, it would be way more interesting for people to buy it yeah, if he fought. If he beat, exactly. Uh, to see if he could beat this kid. Yeah. You're absolutely right, Mike. What's up with the Nuck Boys? What What's up? What's I, up with them, man? I yeah, fucking yeah. love them. So you, you, no, I ain't talking shit about the Nuck Boys. <laughs> I'll tell you that. But he's doing a a, a Walmart liquor tour. Like, you know what's that about? A store? You doing like a, a store tour? Yeah, yeah. So me and the Nuck Boys are gonna. Uh, we're doing this deal. We're talking about this deal right now. It's it's not a done deal, but we're talking about this deal right now with Walmart, and. Uh, you know, we're talking about this big, long-term uh, deal with these guys, and uh, you know, we're we're still in the works. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go on a on a road tour here, 
hitting these different cities and uh, different WalMarts. That's gangster. How is it to work with them? Like you work with them before? I love these kids. Yeah, they, these guys, I've, I've become super close with them over the last several years. Um, hard working, good kids that, that, that fucking get it. Oh, yeah. keep it I'm These guys are tearing your popcorn up. We, we, it tastes good, huh? We got, bo- <laughs> Mike, we got boxes of it, so you give you as much kudo popcorn as you want, brother. Did you see Mike with his bullet? Like he just got thrown his bullet was a fucking I like a baby or something. Man. Yeah, no. How, how funny is his bullet? Isn't he a great a kid, man? I love it. He's gonna fight other little people. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. Hey, listen, has bullet, has bullet is a mean little motherfucker. He'd do it. He, he he'd definitely do it. He's always put. Did he punch you in the face? Yeah, he punches he everybody in the face. Oh, really? Oh, shit. <laughs> I like him, though, a lot. I like him, too. Don't get too serious, though. I said, loosen up, man. Mm. Always them. Um, Uptight. Yeah, yeah, he's always, like, on edge. My I agree. Dream. He's a great kid. The Nelk Boys have actually. They blew him up. They, 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 no, no. Oh. They didn't blow him up. Okay. He was already blown up. They took really good care of him. They, when he came out here, they took him on this like this tour and, and and did a lot of really good shit for him. But Hasbulla's done very well. I mean, we did a deal with him for the uh, the video game deal. We did a deal with him uh, with T-shirts where he made a bunch of money. The kids made easily, easily over a million dollars. Wow. Yeah, just with us Hanging and the Nelk Boys. Himself, yeah. Just with us and the Nelk Boys, he's made easily over a million bucks. So, yeah, he's killing it. Cradled it too, dude. That was crazy. I like babies. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> oh my god, man! The next fights that's coming up, man. Like you know, I, I, I see you're mad excited. Well, yeah, but I'm going to Nashville this weekend. We got a fight in Nashville this weekend. Okay. I got power slap next Wednesday, uh, live and free on Rumble, and then the week after that, we're in Boston. For the, for the title fight, so August is going to be fun. The, the end of the year, every year. I mean, it's it's just like the you know the glory days of boxing. As you start going into the fall, you know the the end of the year schedule is coming up, and it's all fun fights. October, we're in Abu Dhabi. We're going back to Paris for another fight. We're going back to Madison Square Garden with John Jones and Stipe. Oh. The, the end of the year is is going to be fun. So I'm looking forward to uh, winding winding down here in, in 23 and. Um. Yeah, it's been a great fucking year. I used to live in Cleveland um, by the Lorraine Wood Park, but a lot of Serbs lived there. The whole community in, in Ohio, by Cleveland, where a lot of the whole Serb community. Yeah. Oh, oh, you lived. Oh, you lived in that community too. Yeah, I lived not oh, far okay. from there before. Oh, wow. Stepek, I believe, is from that. You community. used to train out of Ohio too, yeah. right? Yeah. When you were with King. Yes. Yeah. Did he, did he have a nice camp there? Was that, was that camp nice? It was really nice. Yeah. For the time. Right. 100%. So what are your origins, man? I heard through the grapevine you used to be like an aerobic like, kickboxer trainer. Is that, is that real? Yeah, well, what everybody says is that I was a box aerobics trainer. That's what everybody <laughs> says I was. Right. <laughs> let's call it. Let's call it what it is. You don't have to, you don't have to, yeah, so, so back in the day, I used to that, – that's, that's how I used to – Make money, but lots lots of fighters do that shit. Oh, okay. But Wait, listen, uh, well, uh, so so here's the thing: if you want to bust somebody's balls, you're like, oh, I heard you used to do fucking box aerobics. Uh, I used to train people okay. and 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 make, you know, that's how I made a living. But yeah, I mean, if if this didn't break out, I'd still be fucking doing that. I loved it. it was, I loved that job. Um, yeah, I used to train um, fighters, and I used to train businessmen. You know, their wives. You know, whatever. I used to, yeah. I loved it. I used to have three gyms here in Vegas, mm. and uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's the truth. If if it yeah, if, if yeah, social media like how it is now back then, it would have been over. Oh fuck! I mean, social media is is one of these things where it's it's the greatest marketing tool of all mm. time. For all the negative things that you can say about social media, and there are plenty of them, there are a lot of positives to it. They literally changed the world in mm. so many ways. Help people uh, that could never been helped before. Yeah. Listen, anything, let's say Mike, I'll give you a perfect example. Let's say Mike is going to make an appearance today somewhere here in Las Vegas. Back in the old days, you'd have to fucking spend money advertising. Yes. Yes. All he's got to do is put one post out now, and the whole fucking world yeah. knows 
where he's going to be, what time. And hey, Mike, let's go to this radio station to talk about this here sports program. Let's go to there to talk about their promoting. That's all day. That's what we're doing. I mean, he has, you, you did it with word of mouth. That's yeah, no, it's true. Back that's in the day. Hardcore. But that's true. Back in the day, it was all about word of mouth. That's crazy. Um, and, and these days, you know, I think social media is one of the, not one of the, it's the greatest marketing tool of all time. Yeah. There's nothing bigger or better. It's literally, and when I was talking about Mike, where he'd be appearing, not only would people in Vegas know about it, the whole fucking world knows. Yes. You know what I mean? It's like when, when we're talking about when he's in London and he's going there, and if people know ahead of time and it gets out on social media, that's how people from other countries can fly in and say, if Mike Tyson's going to be London, there. London is like New York. No one is really from there. Very few people are really from there. They've been born there. They came there because their mothers came from another country where their grandparents came. Mm-hmm. Everyone's like um, third, third, I don't know, third or fourth generation. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of people yeah. from India. And, yeah, and, 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 Caribbean uh, and everything. From, from all over the world that, that, live in, uh, that live in London. London's actually a really cool city now. I mean, when awesome. I first started going there back in the day, the food was fucking horrendous yes, there. It Back was. in like 2001, 2002, Ugh. you couldn't fucking eat there, man. It was so bad. Some of the greatest restaurants in the world now in London. Do you like Indian food? I thought we eat Indian Oh, my Indian. fucking God, and, right? And the Indian in the food UK, in London. I thought we eat is Indian food. And, and it's weird because when you think about Las Vegas, you can eat any kind of food here. All the best restaurants in the world, no real Indian food here. The Indian food in London is fucking, oh, my God. Off the charts, I love it. You like that? Beans, thought, beans and toast. Beans and toast. What the fuck are you talking about? What? No, beans I eat and beans and toast. Where the, beans Where the, the hell are you eating? The beans are not on the toast. <laughs> Where are you eating beans you and ta- toast? What are you talking about? Thank you. You talking about King? What is it? Thank you. Get the fuck. That's King Arthur. You talking about King Arthur's time? Be- no. Beans and toast. King Arthur. What kind of beans? <laughs> like baked beans. Baked beans on toast. Never. Never saw Sausage. that there. That's one of the, that's Let's one of, that's the what, one of those what type of food is it? It's it's British? Oh yeah, that I mean but like English breakfast? Yeah. But it is wet. It's like a wet it's like a pile of wet beans. I don't fuck with English food. Yeah, I'm out, I'm out on that one too. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah, I eat some beans, but I eat refried beans. <laughs> right. I know some hard the Mexican egg. the Mexican food some, beans. Some hard, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm out on the fucking beans and toast and wet bread. I'm, I'm out on that one too. <laughs> I, I didn't run into that shit when I was pissed in on it. That's why it's wet. What did he say? <laughs> the pissed, they pissed on the toast. Oh, <laughs> Look at this guy. This guy Are we ever gonna see Mike in the UFC um, video no. game? He's yeah, hey, he's man, been in the video game. I'm in this game, man. Yeah. What have you been doing? Where have you he's been? In the game. Where he's been in the been? game for the a long time. time. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. What planet do you live on? Uh, I'm not. All the time he's <laughs> today, <laughs> every day. <laughs> yeah, he's been in the game. We've done some fun characters in the game, like Mike, um, Bruce Lee, mm, um, okay. even Tyson Fury. Tyson oh, wow. Fury, and yeah, we 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 like to. You know, you want to keep the game as real as possible. It is also fun to have that other element of uh, you know all these other guys that you'd like to see in the game, like Mike and Bruce Lee and Tyson Fury. In every fighting game. Tank. What about the tank? Remember you had the tank? Yeah, tank Abbott? Tank is in yeah. that shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mike. Tank Abbott, you remember him? Yeah. yeah probably no. have been in every <laughs> fighting game ever made, right? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea, shit. This is one of these guys that I grew, you know, we're, we're, we're the same age, but I grew up a fucking huge Mike. I mean, all you have to do is walk around this building, and Mike is everywhere in this building. You know, I, I, thank you, bro. I, I thank love you. and respect Mike Tyson so much, and uh, you know, we we do very good business together. Whatever the fuck Mike wants to do, we do. We do it, right? <laughs> Whatever Mike don't want to do, we don't do. So it's all good. Yes, that's a troublemaker. <laughs> <laughs> He's down low, but you know, this guy's a troublemaker. <laughs> music wise, who you fuck with, man? Like, who the fuck I like lots of different music. You I'm, see, I'm Eminem came kinds. in there with um, Crawford. I was he lost then. As soon as Eminem came in, yeah, it was over. It was over. You can't come out with Eminem and lose, man. <laughs> Your songs lose yourself. You can't. And lose, he had man. the big hit. Yeah, that's just meant for a fight. Boxing that song. Yeah, I like all types of music. I mean, I'm in, I'm into everything. I'm into old school rap, old school rock. I don't like a lot of this new shit, but. 
uh, turn it up to Hall and Oates and shit like that. To, I like Hall and Oates too. Today. I heard them yesterday. I like Hall and Oates too. Yeah, <laughs> you like a Hall and Oates guy. Do it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, but why you listen to like what DMX or Jay's? I like DMX too. Yeah, okay, of right. course. Yeah, I like DMX. Uh, you know, it's funny. I was just listening to. I was listening to yesterday in the gym. The Fat Boys. Remember the Fat oh Boys? Oh my God, the Fat Boys. Boop, the boop, fat boop, 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 boop. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they did, right? Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, yeah, they, oh, they, they, those guys were super lit. Back yeah, yeah, they were. Hey, I listen. like them. One of them just said, hey, I got to lose some weight. That's Marky D, right? He mm-hmm. lost the weight. Yeah. I saw those guys around there driving their bins and mm-hmm. stuff. It's, oh, man. You knew they weren't going to have. It wasn't going to end well. The only one that's left is Cool Marky Rock Ski. D. No. Cool Rock Ski. The other two died. The two heavy set ones. The dark yeah. skin guy. Mm-hmm. The Spanish guy's still around. Morales, he's still around. Oh, wow. Cool Rock Ski. No, the fat boys. There were yeah. three of them. It was Marky D. Marky D. He died. Yeah, no, Marky D's not dead. Look up Marky D. Marky D died. Boy. Did he died, see? bro. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. He, he died a few years ago. You talking about ski? Marky D. Who Look up Marky D from the Fat Boys. He lost weight. Yeah. yeah cool Rock Ski is the only one that's still <laughs> alive. <laughs> How many of the Fat Boys still alive? <laughs> the rapper he group. Died yeah. He died what? February 21, Marky D died. Wow. There's only one left. Cool Rock Ski. Cool Rock Ski is the only one that's still alive. How much does he weigh? No, he's skinny now. He's lean. Yeah. yeah. Thank God. He's working out and shit. Yeah. That's crazy. I'm glad you stated that because people think you listen to like a lot of heavy rock, heavy metal, and because. Yeah, I listen to, to rock stuff, but I'm a big fucking rap fan from way back when. Okay. And, and, you know, I mean, I grew up in, in the 80s when, when rap really started to take off. Fucking Run DMC, LL Cool J, the Beastie Boys, um, the Fat Boys, Salt and Pepper. You I mean, give it, love yeah. a bad name. But that's Bon Jovi. <laughs> wow. Yep, that's him. Wow. Wow. That might be too fat, but yeah. Thank God, I'm what? so happy for him. I hope he's happy for him. <laughs> That's crazy, yo. Um, but yeah, I was a big rap That's guy in, 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 in the 80s. And plus, I mean, when you were talking about DMX, I mean, one of the greatest walk-in songs of all time yeah. was when Mike walked into fucking, you know, the DMX. I met him when he was an interesting person. Yeah. You know, very interesting, very intelligent, very smart. He's very spiritual too, man. He what? But you see something's right? wrong. You see something's yeah. wrong with so He's really quick. He's, mm-hmm. he's, um, he's kind of anal. He's smart. Stick on one thing for a long time. How'd you end up walking into that song? We, we, did you just hear DMX and you were into it at that time? and Or did you did you meet him? Or Oh, no, I didn't meet him. I met him once, but it wasn't like... Um, well, we talked for a long period of time. He said, how you doing? Did everything well? You know, he was very studious. I didn't mm. expect that from him. You know, and um, I had to leave, but... I had, it was a good experience meeting them. You want? I'll tell you guys something fascinating. So, basically, the way that the UFC production is built was based off Mike Tyson's walk-in um, to that DMX song when he was coming back in the France, Francois Botha fight. Oh, so, wow. you, so me being a huge, I I I, I hated the fucking commentary on HBO boxing. Hated it. Made me sick. I used to literally watch HBO Boxing and mute oh, commentary because wow. I couldn't stand these fucking guys. Um, so Mike Tyson, everybody's buying the pay-per-view because you like Mike Tyson, right? Or you just want to see what, whatever crazy shit's going to happen, whatever. But for real boxing fans and Tyson fans, Tyson's walking into the bow the fight. And I use this as an example all the time I show people. They are shitting on Mike. From the minute he starts walking in until he steps into the into the uh, ring, wow! And it used to, I couldn't fucking stand listening to these clowns. So when we started building the commentary for UFC, you don't ever see the commentators shit on the fighters when they're walking in. So you, they're hurting their own job. If you watch that, pull up, pull up. Uh, I think it's uh, it's like under something like Mike Tyson, scariest walk in or or whatever. I want to play this on the podcast and show this to you guys. But 
then uh you know so mike's walking in they shit on him the whole fucking way in there and uh you know i'm a tyson fan i'm watching this fuck i bought this pay-per-view because I'm, I'm a tyson fan and i want to see this fight and then the same thing happened with larry merchant and the floyd mayweather after floyd mayweather he starts talking shit to floyd mayweather after his fight and says to floyd if i was 30 years younger i'd kick your fucking ass right now oh, wow. <laughs> what? what the fuck are you talking about That's crazy you you clown these guys that were on HBO, now listen to this. Turn the volume up. Oh, shit. Champion. Listen to the commentary. Here he comes, Mike Tyson. As he heads toward the same ring, he made his disgraceful exit in June of 97. He made his disgraceful exit. Revved up. Listen, listen to what these fucking, what this guy says. I think that's one of the fucking brothers there. I can't remember his name. Tyson entering to some scary, imposing music. <laughs> you fucking pussy. Really? Will he be able to intimidate his opponent tonight? Will it even matter? Right? What does that even mean? He's turning the corner. The fans will soon see him. I can't believe I could do this shit. Listen to what he says here when he walks in. I've watched this 10 million times. Whoa. Listen, listen. I really thought there'd be uh, more of an explosion by the crowd here, but uh, very mixed. Right? I thought there'd be more of an Even with the win tonight, no matter how one-sided, he will still have his detractors. They're shitting on him the whole walk. Following the two fights to with Holyfield, his stock plummeted. The pundits came down hard. His stock plummeted. He fucking... His knockouts were over. Second-rate fighters. Now the crowd erupts more as he gets into the ring. But it's certainly nothing right? overwhelming. The guy right, cannot right. stop. It's one of the Albert brothers. Yeah. He cannot guy? stop talking shit about him the whole walk-in. So you're, you're a fight fan, right? You're tuning in wow. to watch Tyson. And this fucking idiot is literally shitting on him the whole fucking walk-in. So when we, when we built the, the, you know, the production for the UFC... You don't fucking talk shit about the fighter. You talk about his record. You talk about this. You talk about that. Last fight, fight before. Did you but, see but you know what I'm saying? Did you, huh? him? Did, you, did you see this guy that talked shit about you? Did you yeah. see him during that time? Yeah, but it's okay. That's you know, crazy. It's okay. Listen, nobody in Russia knows who he is. <laughs> but, but the thing is, that, that was my problem with HBO boxing. These guys would literally talk shit about well, these listen. fighters you're buying this fucking product because of the fighters yeah. I, le you. I left hbo to start showtime boxing oh because of all the bullshit that's crazy yeah we started showtime boxing and we left hbo that's crazy yeah so that that had a huge impact on me coming up as a fight fan and uh you know so a lot of what you see in the production of the UFC with the commentators and the people who are involved based off this Tyson, you know, this Tyson walk-in right there. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, just learned, I learned that today. That's crazy. <laughs> I didn't know that. Well, it's good that is something on this planet that you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I helped you. And I helped you. I helped you learn something. I learned it. I'm taking this with me. Taking it to the grave. Hey, you know what I never knew? You have brothers and sisters? I have a sister, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you have a sister. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Good. What would you be with a brother? That would have been cool if you had a brother, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it would have been interesting. So tell us more, brother. 
Uh, are you the spiritual guy? Uh, like, no. Nah, or are you just? Uh, nah, you know, it's funny. I don't believe in much. But oh, for, really? But for some reason, I believe in karma. Karma is the one thing that I do believe in for whatever fucking weird reason. I don't really believe. I'm not very religious at all. I don't believe in God, the devil, ghosts, goblins, fucking angels, or any of that shit. But uh, I believe in karma for some reason. I believe that, um, like Mike was saying earlier, we, you know, what you put out, you get back. If you, you know, if you're a good person, you take care of people, you treat people right, treat people with respect, comes back. You know, if you if you are fortunate enough to have in life, you give. And, uh, you know, yeah, that's about as spiritual as I get. You know what I noticed about Vegas? Everybody in Vegas, all the um, limo drivers know who's the best tipper in town. They all tell each other who's the best tipper. And who is it? I don't know. There's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of guys that's tipping, but a lot of guys like me. <laughs> and there's a lot of tippers. Yeah. But that's that. it. I mean, that it's uh, that's all part of it you know what i mean the uh you know taking care of people who yeah they take never care of, forget that 100 percent. 20 years i tipped this guy remember what i tipped him and everything yeah it's a big they'll deal people, it. man you know people are out there out there grinding and working especially you know when you come across somebody who has and is very fortunate in life do they share and do they you know, do oh, they I know do i'm sure you know guys are billion they don't want to tip no one 100 percent you look at these guys, just, you know, when you first know this part about them, you're cool with them. Then you look at this motherfucker, you see this motherfucker. Yeah. I literally just experienced that in, in, in Italy when I was there. It was amazing how many people I came across that, um, you know, that, that deal with, whether it was in the restaurant that we were at or on the boat, that deal with billionaires all the time, and they don't take care of them. They don't, you know, it's, it's fascinating to me. Yeah, just me and my wife looks at it too. Really fascinating. Well, they don't believe that. Why do I have to tip him? I'm I'm paying him. Right. Why am I tipping him? It's not like he's giving it to me free. Right. Well, it depends, and it depends on the level of service you want. You know, what I mean? <laughs> right? If you want a, a certain level of service, uh, you can't expect everybody to. You know, there has to be. There always has to be that carrot. Uh, you know, of motivation of like. If I go above and beyond and really fucking knock it out of the park, maybe I'll be taken care of and, and whatever. It's just, I'm, I'm, I'm just a big believer in that. We do that in, in, in this business too. We, we, we give bonuses for people who go out and fucking lay it all out in the line. We give bonuses, um, you know. Bonuses inspire. I agree. I mean, being in Vegas, man, it's like, I was telling my boy the other day, I, I wasted like 80 bucks going from the card of the room. Like, tip this guy, tip this guy with the bag. <laughs> right. Then the guy, then they bring the bag up. There's another guy bringing the bag up. I'm like, yeah, I got to well, this guy too. Like, you, no, you're, no, you're right. So, so there's two different things. You know, there's the, there's the, yes, Vegas is the land of tipping or whatever, but they can also pull the fucking racket on you, right? So the guy comes up, right? You go to a hotel. Guy comes out and uh, takes your bags out of the car and sets them in the bag, whatever. You go, oh, thanks, right? Then all of a sudden you turn around, there's a fucking new guy with the car. Wait a minute, where the fuck did this guy go? I feel bad. Okay. I feel bad cause... So, so then you're like, all right, let me take care of this guy. So you take care of this guy. Now some other fucking guy pops up. Oh, there's three or four of them. And, and you know, you, you can get that's fucking that, jerked around with oh, the whole yeah, that's thing, how, too. They try to me that, so when they do that, I say, oh, I give them, normally I give them 100 for themselves. Or when they play, I say, give them half of this. <laughs> take care of you. Hey, yeah. gonna take care you got you guys figure this out amongst yourselves here's a hundred but no it's true i, I mean i'll fucking like, like my boy elliot over here we, we see this in places we go like when people know that you tip well right there'll be fucking nine guys i got two bags there's nine guys handing the bag to each fucking you know what i mean there's nine of them right we've seen this this one pulled off but you know fuck it what are you gonna do it's, it's, what are you gonna do? I just feel bad, you know. So I just, I just. I, but don't I do it for that. Don't do it because you feel bad. Do it because you really think that they need it. No, I, I think that's you're helping But them. I do feel bad, like there's another man, like another, especially you know, helping me out. I don't know. I just, yeah, yeah, we'll take care of you. Just don't guy. pull the don't, don't pull the racket on me. Like yeah, it's yeah. like when you go out to a fucking nightclub, and, and they're like, hey, you want a bottle of champagne? They bring the fucking champagne over. That's you know, fucking way overpriced anyway. And then they start pouring. <laughs> 
you know, 30 glasses for everybody, and then somebody will take a sip and they throw it out or dump it, and then, hey, you need another bottle of champagne. No, oh, we're fucking wow. good. We're, we're good with the champagne. They didn't like the one you gave us. <laughs> Just don't pull the foot. <laughs> exactly. Just don't pull the racket on us. We'll take care of you. You, you. you stated you don't believe in anything. Like, the other day they had a press conference about aliens and shit. So if an alien comes down and it's mass suicides, would you be surprised? No, I do believe in that. Okay. I do believe in to, to think that – you know, out of the whole fucking universe and however, you know, big it is and however long ago, to think that we're the only people that exist is crazy. I, I, I don't believe that. Do I believe that there are aliens down here right now amongst... I, I don't believe that shit either, but who the fuck knows, <laughs> right? Who knows? And it came to Vegas, supposedly. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> they know where to go. Fucking Vegas. <laughs> Even the aliens know where to Did fucking you ever go. you think like this? <laughs> This is the a place to come that, hang out. If there's any aliens here, it's us. We are the aliens. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. It, we, who the fuck we, knows? We that, know, that's we, a whole different story. We don't know who we are. For me to think that there's somebody up somewhere orchestrating everything mm. in our lives and what's going on and we can ask him for favors and shit like that, I don't believe in that. No, um, I believe they give us the power that we don't know about to be able to dictate and, get, and never get our lives. Who knows at the end of the day, man? We're, you know, so why, we're going to find why, out. Why we're going to find guy, out in a few why, years why, here. Why do one guy make it and the other person doesn't? And this guy is more sophisticated, mm. you know? Well, I think, that there's, I, I think that there's scenarios where some people just have that fucking thing. You, the will. you had that fucking thing. You know, first of all, you, you're a special individual physically. You know what what you were capable of doing physically, and you know sometimes things just align. You met Cust, and you know, and and you were on this trajectory to to become who you became. But it's because of who you are. You're made up a certain way. It's the the you know physically you were capable of doing what you were doing. You look like a bad motherfucker and always did. Um, your 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 attitude. You're just you have that thing, and some people have that whether it's in fighting or acting or singing or whatever it is, and others just don't, you know what I mean? Some people are born very attractive, and people who are born very attractive have much easier lives than people who are, yeah. are not attractive, let's put it that way. And, you know, everybody sort of has this thing. And though you might not be as attractive as another person, you might have a fucking incredible personality, and you can make people laugh, and, and, and everybody has their thing. And some people are just born absolute fucking pussies and want to complain a bitch about everything and why their life doesn't work and then there's other people who are fucking savages and go out and work hard and grind every day so i don't believe that it's you know people are set up in different ways people are just made different ways and we as human beings are attracted to certain things and not attracted to other things it's, it's i agree but we are the aliens <laughs> that's crazy it is wealth a factor because well like, you had a different mindset in the beginning when you had no money now you have money i guess you have no i always had the same mindset oh, really? I, i've always been the same really? person that i am right here today Holy i do have more money but i'm the same fucking person i i always was and when he says we are the aliens here one of the things that i believe is i believe that we think we're way more important than we really are that's what i believe as well. i think because we're intelligent we believe that, oh, there has to be a reason why we're here. There has to be this. We think we're way, we are a fucking infestation a joke. of this planet. We are an infestation of this planet. And then you have all these fucking nuts that are like, oh, we have to fucking save the planet. And we have to, <laughs> believe me, when the planet is fucking done with us. Oh, it's over. It's yeah. fucking. We won't even know. Exactly. We, we will, this thing will fucking shake us like a case of the fucking fleas. Uh, when it's time, when our time is up, if you look at the history of the world and what has existed on this planet, we're just another little blip. Our lifespan is nothing. Nothing. We're already there, close nothing. to our expiration date. Hundred mm. percent. And we feel like we're gonna live forever. Isn't that some shit? Hundred percent. When you you hear these egotistical maniacs saying, "Oh, we need to fucking take care of the planet." Yeah, listen. When you're, when, you, when you're out in the ocean, don't throw your shit in the ocean. Don't be a fucking asshole, mm -hmm. all right? T take your trash and throw it where it's supposed to be fucking thrown. Don't do this and don't do that and global warming and all this other. When the fucking planet is ready for us to go, 
we're gone. We are going to take me. care of the planet because when we die, they're gonna, the animals of the planet are going to eat our ass. <laughs> we are taking care <laughs> exactly. of the planet. Whatever's here, the plastic that we, there will be very few, you know, very few things to remember that we even existed. There'll be some buildings. And but I was just in, uh, when I was just in Italy, they were telling me that they literally just found this other civilization, you know, with all these tunnels and all these caves. They just found it now. It's fucking 2023. And they just found this. That's going to be us someday. Oh, listen, you know what I mean? Dig- we we, the, we the aren't that fucking caves, important. No, not at all. We still, right now, we do more investigating on the Egyptians than we do on the human race right now. And then we want to find their wealth. We want to find their knowledge. We want to find their treasures. Well, who built the fucking pyramids? We don't know. Who built them? How did they build them? And all this shit. Why did they build them? Right? I mean, we can't even build a house for the last three fucking years oh, now. Over, These guys yeah. built the fucking pyramids, you know? 5,000, 10,000. There's a lot of crazy shit that went on in this world that we don't know. We, we think we are so fucking important, and we are not. I mean, you got, Enjoy your time you got here. I'm trying. Have fucking fun. Be happy. Stop fucking fighting with everybody. Just fucking enjoy yourself for the, like he said, the very small amount of time you got left. Hey, you got you guys were talking about like the overseas stuff, like the food and all that stuff, the conspiracy theories. How about those so-called conspiracy theory of like these so-called elites that's just trying to like population control us i fucking like completely us believe it you i believe you have these yeah. fucking lunatic arrogant motherfuckers who who think that you know you, you've seen these slip-ups where they're talking about uh you know if we can decrease the population if we can decrease the population it, i i believe it. listen the food over here sucks every fucking thing we eat over here you know hurts you fucks you up everybody's trying to get you on pills big time and you know these doctors are trying to get you all doped up on fucking medicine and all this other shit i was just in italy the food is incredible over there when you get done eating the italian food in italy you don't feel like you just ate a pillow loaded yeah exactly and and, and feel all fucked up because they're not putting all this garbage listen in, in the no, fuck. So is it 12 53 right I, I got a meeting at 12 30. wow what happened i got to go it's fucking one o'clock yeah i was gonna say i got a I got to be at 12:30. Listen. Hold on, you have a gift to give him. I just saw his phone and I was like, "Oh shit. Oh shit." Yeah. All right, we got that from Tyson Sports. Got to check out the new gloves. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, thank you, brother. Tyson Sports. We're going to ready to come out here and our fighters are going to start wearing this. Oh, this is so cool. Don't you power slap Mike Tyson? I don't want to get power slapped. <laughs> <laughs> Little shit. See ya. <laughs> I got to get you to a fucking power slap event, though. Oh, man. I'm going to be a cringe. Oh, what are fuck. these? Are these these 12s? Those are 14s, right? 14? I think they're going to You're right. You know your club. Congrats. Congrats on all your success, man. Thank I'd love you, to brother. see you. Thank I'd love you. to see you fucking kick ass. And I know you brother. do, and I appreciate that. Love you. Another episode of Hot Boxing comes to an end. I'm Mike Tyson. I'm who And thank you very much, Dana White, for your appearance here. Thanks for having me. I love, I love it, brother. And this is another end of the episode. <laughs>